Is that working? Is that working? I think it is. I wonder if how many people are going to stay through that. How many people care enough to stay through that? Just had a connection issue. If you don't have the Wi-Fi all the way off, it tries to hook into the uh, hotel Wi-Fi across the way. And I just thought it would automatically smoothly flip over to my Verizon service, which, by the way, somebody asked on Facebook what cell phone service is the best. And most people were opining, and some people tried to defend T-Mobile. But I, this isn't a commercial for Verizon, but Verizon's the best service. <laughs> it is. It just has the most coverage. If you want to make a phone, be able to make a phone call, you better go with Verizon. Talk about a slogan. I mean, why, does, why doesn't Verizon hire me for a jillion dollars? If you want to make a phone call, you better go with Verizon. And I'm serious. Good morning from Texas. Good morning, Tommy John. I'm here in Yellowstone, and most other companies don't have any service, but Verizon gets pretty good coverage here. And I found that to be true in many places. And I don't know if I've ever been to a place that could, where T-Mobile could get a signal and I couldn't. So I just don't know. I don't understand why anyone would want to save a dollar or two a month or something, whatever it is, and not get service. Because not getting service is frustrating. But good morning, good morning, good morning to you. My name is Ken Tracy, and this is uh, Coffee with Ken. It is Wednesday morning. It's 5.59 a.m. Happy Wednesday. This is a little show I have been doing for quite some time. It's a show about me talking and sharing some feelings and sharing some random thoughts. And I'm not sure if I'm feeling a little grumpy today. I might be feeling a little grumpy today. I didn't hop out of bed. I was deep in sleep and my little alarm went off in my earbuds. And I was going, bah! Just didn't want to get up. Staggered down to the shower. I got a new roommate last night. We might talk about that later. Staggered down to the shower. Started the water and got undressed. Because I, I started the water first before I got undressed. Yesterday I did it the other way. And I realized it took a long, long time for the water to heat up. I'll tell you what. It still takes a real long, long time. It takes like four or five minutes for the water to get slightly warm. <laughs> It feels good to be able to get this off my chest. I thank you for being there for me to hear me <laughs> tell you about how long it took for the water to get warm in my shower. I was so looking forward to it. I uh, wanted to uh, so badly get back to sleep and just standing there in the shower stall waiting for the water to heat up wasn't what I was wanting to be doing at that moment, let me tell you. But anyway, for those who have been watching a while, you know it's not just a show about me talking. You know it is also a show about me sharing my love of coffee. And with that in mind, I got a nice hot cup of coffee in front of me. And I am so excited to take my first sip. My hope is wherever you are. <laughs> I hope, Chip, I'm not just sharing life's issues. I, I hate, hope I get to share some of the glorious moments as well. The I talk about my daughter's graduation or the love I feel when I'm tickling my little ones. So hopefully it's not just issues. And I do share the beauty that is coffee. So uh, my hope is wherever you are and whatever you're doing, you got a hot cup of coffee in front of you as well. Cheers to us. Uh, well, again, <laughs> it's good. It's good. It was just such a big part of my show, revealing what coffee I was drinking and talking about the deep, hearty flavors of the dark roast Sumatra. And now to be drinking cafeteria coffee day after day. Tell you, I was, again, feeling kind of grumbly. And somehow when I walk outside and the fresh air hits me and I, I'm strutting to work slowly, my chest starts sticking out and my shoulders get back and I feel a little better and feel a little more purposeful and feel a little more, <laughs> slightly more enthused for the uh, breakfast shift I'm going to be working here in a few minutes. And uh, I tell you what, and I talk about gratitude and prayer and kind of combining them by thanking God. I think that's the easiest, most quickest way uh, to feel better 
is just finding something to thank God for. And uh, again, I mentioned earlier, I had a couple or a new roommate last night. And they, ooh, what do I have on my head? I don't even know. I had something on my head or my finger, maybe. Um, a young man from Romania. And it was interesting talking to him and his buddy for a little while. And they flew in the day before all the way from Romania. And they are here. They say Romania is a beautiful country and has mountains. And they're here to work. And all their questions were based around, can they get overtime? Uh, good day. Can they get overtime? Can they work more hours? How do they, because they want to make more money. And, uh, you know, they're young and enthusiastic. But so much of my show is based around gratitude and how money doesn't buy happiness. And then it got me thinking this morning that, you know, I work last night and I'm working this morning and I must be doing the work for some reason. So it's probably the money and the joy of feeling, I don't know, purposeful. Uh, but I felt a little bad for these kids because I'm not, I mean, I don't know how much money they're going to be making. I don't know if flying halfway around the world uh, is enough reason to come out here just for the money. And it got me thinking that, you know, it's beautiful here, but it kind of, the heart, it's like a worker's camp, you know, <laughs> You're working a lot. I have people ask me all the time, oh, do you love it out here? Well, I like it, uh, and it's good, but I miss my kids, and I miss my family, and I miss my friends. Uh, and the job is work. It's not any glorious. I'm not a, I don't know <laughs> what glorious job one could be doing in Yellowstone. But I'm waiting tables, and I'm dealing with backed-up kitchens and kind of crabby customers occasionally because we had a very backed-up kitchen last night. Uh and just still dealing with the stuff that you face in everyday life. And just because you're in Yellowstone, which is a beautiful place, uh, a lot of the stuff doesn't fade away. And your focus changes. Um, again, kind of the rat race. Uh, you have a work schedule. And maybe this is true in life. Maybe this is true in life. But your time away from work, uh, you need to more purposely fill uh, than maybe you do back home. Because the time away from work back home was spent with my babies or my kids or cheering on my bigger girls and their sports or doing whatever family with family and friends. And since you left your family and friends, or at least I did back in Chicago, um, you're either working or you're trying to fill the time. And... Uh, you know, I think this for me is a different trip. I think we all have our reasons for being here. And this for me is a different trip uh, than for a lot of people. And maybe I needed, I don't know, focused work, I guess. Focused, regular work. And I was going to say nine to five work, but my work is anything but that. Again, I was in from four yesterday to, I don't know, 10.30, and I had to wake up to get to work at six this morning. And uh, I'm fortunate to have it, and I was fortunate to get my first paycheck, and I'm going to be fortunate to get my next paycheck, and I'm going to be fortunate <laughs> for every customer that comes in, grumbly or not this morning, wanting their coffee and their cream and their eggs and their cranberry juice, because uh, it's all part of, I don't know, God's plan for me. And uh, I think whenever I think about it like that or life like that, uh, it sure makes me feel a heck of a lot better because, uh, yeah, it just sure makes me feel a heck of a lot better because I didn't really have any faith or belief that things happen for a reason. And I kind of looked at uh, life as drudgery a lot of times because it was either work or for me, you know, several years ago or drinking or whatever, looking for highs that were hard to find. And uh, I don't know, life's just kind of changing. And life does kind of change. And uh, uh, yeah. Mm. Oh. But I'm feeling quiet.
just working the breakfast shift today. And, uh, uh, yeah, just working the breakfast shift. So I'll be done at 10.30 or 11. Have a couple shifts tomorrow, and then it starts my weekend where I get two and a half days off. Talked about it yesterday. I'm hoping to see a, a conversion van uh, this afternoon that a gentleman's selling and that I work with. And uh, I don't know. When I think about that, I get excited. And I think it's good to feel excited. And my brother Steve uh, used to say life's a lot more fun when you're excited about something. And uh, he was right. Rolling a ton of silverware. It seems I spend my days and nights rolling silverware after my shifts, uh, doing side work and bistling up carpets. Uh, but that's the uh, doldrum side of me. And if we look at life a little bit different and, again, focus on things happening for a reason and uh, that there's a purpose to this and a meaning to this, uh, life gets a little more fun and it kind of becomes... Uh, uh, I don't know, part of some grand plan. And it's a lot more fun thinking life's part of some grand plan. But anyway, I don't have a whole heck of a lot for you because I'm still waking up. And it's about 6.10. Work starts in five minutes. I'm going to fill up my coffee. I'm hoping we have a pretty, pretty day. I'm sure we will here. We got some storms last night, which was pretty cool. And uh, the coffee is cafeteria coffee, RJ. It's cafeteria coffee. Uh, I long, I miss a lot of things about home. Uh, but one of the things I miss is uh, uh, the excitement of a uh, uh, fresh brewed pot of coffee the way I like it with a little more something something than this coffee has in it. But I see a light at the end of the tunnel. And I see a Mr. Coffee in my future. And I see, whether it's in a house or an apartment or a conversion van, uh, a good future for me and uh, <laughs> good coffee in my future and getting back to my kids and seeing them. And uh, uh, I look forward in life and I kind of smile. And a lot of times in my life I didn't, you know, I couldn't imagine uh, uh, goodness coming down the road. And not that this is badness. Uh, not that this is badness at all. I'm in Yellowstone. But it seems I've been working a lot the last several days. And I think I'm just a little tired and run down. Uh, so I don't want to bring you down today, but it's true. I will say I did lift weights yesterday. Am I going to buy the RV? Well, I'm going to look at it today. I have to figure out how to buy it. I have probably 20% of the money I need to purchase it from the uh, gentleman. And uh, it's a, a, a really low cost, really high mileage, be a really low entry or easy entry into the RV market and uh, set me up in a way that I probably need to be set up. And, uh, you know, it doesn't cost a heck of a lot, but I think it would do the job for the next, I don't know, six months at the minimum and maybe a few years at the longer term and uh, get me ready for my next step. So when I think about it, it makes me excited. And uh, I think about the things I can do and the fact that I could ride in the snow and I was looking out, uh, doing some research on hitching my scooter to the back of it. And I think it would be really, really cool for me and uh, kind of drives me forward and uh, gets me excited about working today because I need the money to pay for the <laughs> RV and to keep going. Kind of pretty sky behind us, isn't it, today? Uh, yeah, Maverick, that's what it costs. You want it to scooter home from in October? I would like to probably not have to scooter home. I'd like to be towing the scooter behind me or have it hitched to the back. Uh, because I think it's going to be hard to scooter out of here come come October, and because uh, uh, I think we're going to get some snow. I figured it would be, uh, you know, fall and fall's a great riding time, but maybe it's not a great riding time when you live in the mountains. I think the brakes are all good. I don't know. I haven't looked at it, Brent. I haven't done that much, but I think the guy took really good care of the 
uh, uh, the van and put a lot of miles on it, but did it lovingly. And I believe it, I'll, I haven't checked it out yet, but I think, and not that I know what to check out for, but at this price point, uh, I almost think I can't afford not to do it. I almost feel I can't afford not to do it. And uh, again, I'm talking to my oldest daughter who might be coming out in a month and a half or so, and I'd love to be able to pick her up in my car and not have to rent a car. And if she needed a place to stay, I'd love her to be able to stay in my little RV uh, rather than worry about trying to find her housing here. And uh, Brenda says she gets so scared buying high mileage used. Yeah, we always get scared about stuff. There's always things to be scared about. <laughs> Half my show's talking about being scared and not worrying about it so much. Uh, it was funny. I saw a guy and I had people telling me, oh, you know, there's somebody else looking at it. He might buy it from under you. There's competition. And I go, eh, I'm not going to worry about that either. If, you know, some other guy wants to buy it away from me, it wasn't meant to be. And uh, it it just wasn't meant to be. And I'm okay with that, and I'm okay with going with the flow and doing my show and drinking my coffee and saying good morning to people at the restaurant and slinging hash and checking it out and uh, getting some rest later in the day and uh, kind of plugging along and making it through this hump day. And I apologize if I wasn't ultra-inspirational to you today, but I'm just kind of tired. I got home late, and I woke up early, and I, my coffee's just cafeteria coffee. So it's sometimes hard to be super inspirational when you're really tired and you're drinking cafeteria coffee. Uh, but I'm doing my best. And I'm still smiling, and I'm still laughing, and I'm going to go in there and annoy the crap out of my fellow employees with super enthusiasm, saying, good morning, and singing songs, and cheering, and uh, drinking. How many paychecks will it take to gather the rest of the money for the RV? Uh, I don't know. I think I should be able to save, I, you know, I budgeted, I plan to save about $1,000 a month, and the RV costs about 10 grand and I have about two grand right now. So, uh, it'd be eight months really. So I'm going to have to creatively finance a chunk of it. Uh, but again, I think things happen for a reason. And if I can do it, or if the guy's flexible with some terms or something like that, or, uh, I don't know, I'll figure a way, uh, I'll figure a way. But I think again, it started with me dreaming a couple months ago, uh, started with me dreaming about it a couple months ago and then all of a sudden one appeared in the parking lot that I became affordable um, and I'm going to go check it out today so it's now becoming a plan and a goal I think it'd be right for me at this time and I think it'd be pretty neat so anyway that's all I have for you I mean I could talk longer but it's 616 and I need to be punched in by 620 or I get in trouble and I don't like to get in trouble at the core of this rebellious spirit is a rule follower. So I'm going to scurry on in and uh, get my day started and have the best possible attitude I can and uh, uh, keep smiling and work hard and uh, be so grateful when my shift is over and when I'm eating lunch and I get to go home and rest a little bit because go back at it tomorrow, maybe edit some videos and uh, hopefully enjoy some sunshine today and, uh, yeah, to be able to live in it in winter, it's got heater, it's got everything, uh, Lynn. So I think it, uh, could be really cool for me, but anyway, I hate to rush you off, but I got to go. I want to thank you so much for joining. I appreciate you. I hope your week's going well. I hope you're feeling good. I hope you had a great night's sleep. I hope you're loving yourself. I hope you're forgiving yourself. And as always, I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye.